Well, despite some exciting developments in cancer treatment, most of the research funding in the U.S. focuses on the deadliest forms of the disease and at the latter stages. It's an approach that Dr. Azra Raza says needs to be revisited. She's the Chan Soon Xiong Professor of Medicine at Columbia University and author of The First Cell. And I first asked her what she thinks of the way U.S. cancer research is funded. It's very clear that we have come a long way in cancer treatment thanks to the funding and thanks to the trial system which has resulted in a cure for 68% of the cancers being diagnosed today. And as you know, today is World Cancer Day, which is a great uh, moment to celebrate this kind of victory. 32% um, patients who are not cured today, um, they are the ones whose outcome is no different than it was 50 years ago. And the way we are strategizing uh, resources investment right now is um, trying to improve the outcome for the 32 percent who are uh, failing to respond to current therapies. In other words, uh, going after advanced cancer all the time, uh, whereas we know that early detection is what is going to work. So the clinical trials uh, that are currently testing new drugs for cancer have a failure rate of 95 percent. They help a fraction of the patients in whom they are tried and improve survival by a few months. I'm saying we should do better than that, not just for these patients with advanced cancers, but even those 68% we are curing, we are curing them with what? With treatments that have been in use for 50 years and more, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery, which I call slash, poison, and burn. We should do better by those patients as well. As you mentioned, it's, it's been 50 years now of ongoing research and focus that focus on, on the late stage of cancer. What would you like to see happen? I think we have developed tremendous understanding in the biology of cancer in these past uh, 50 years. Plus, the technology has evolved to a point where we can imagine using smart phones and artificial intelligence and imaging and um, scanning devices, uh, detection of circulating tumor cells in the blood, uh, sweat, tears, urine, saliva of patients. We can uh, imagine now uh, really advancing the detection of cancer through monitoring the human body continuously like a machine instead of going in with sca uh, screening techniques like mammography or uh, PSA testing on an yearly basis. So what sh we should be doing is using the technology to diagnose cancer uh, in its earliest forms. And it's happening. How do you think things are shifting, not just medically, but also in terms of how society views cancer? Society has viewed cancer with great dread and for a good reason because even when they have curative treatment uh, possible for them, it's, uh, the treatment itself is so brutal that somebody has described it as taking a baseball bat to a dog to get rid of its fleas. So of course people are scared but what I'm saying is if we uh, have the methodology to diagnose cancer and its footprints in its earliest phases, we can prevent it from becoming that end-stage monstrosity. And I brought you something to show you that uh, this, for example, is, a, is some, a device called M-CHIP, which is already FDA approved. Here it is developed by biomedical engineers at Columbia University, and I work with them, Dr. Sam Sia, who developed this. It's FDA approved, as I said. All you do is put one drop of blood here, and by using these microfluidics, it can test for the presence of PSA and quantitate it. So in other words, PSA is prostate-specific antigen, so that if men have prostate cancer, they can use this device at home to monitor themselves whether the level is going up or down. And that takes away the fear from them. So I think that the ability to have these kinds of tests available where you can sit at home, use one drop of blood. Uh, Toshiba, the company in Japan, just announced that from one drop of blood, they can identify 12 different cancers within two hours for a price of $183. And you certainly be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't even know of or have a friend or a family member who's been touched by cancer. I lost my own grandmother to breast cancer. What can 
private citizens do then? How can they make sure that if they are donating or giving to these causes, that they do end up going in a direction that will actually help with the final results? Clearly, the one thing that uh, I feel very strongly about is that somehow we keep giving the impression to the general public that fantastic things are happening in cancer treatment and that we, the advances are curing all kinds of, uh, of poor risk patients. That is not the case. We have to stop misrepresenting the facts and uh, educate the public to what the truth is. And the truth is that the only gains we have made in decline in cancer deaths is because of early detection but hundreds of billions of dollars later except for a few advances we continue to use the same ancient uh, treatments of slash poison burn so I think that it is very very important to educate the public, to let them become aware of, uh, of uh, the reality, take the blinders off our eyes and see that trying to understand every signaling pathway in a cancer cell through biologic studies and animal models will take another 2,000 years for us to cure cancer. It is too complicated and it's a moving target. What we need to do is move in to the one strategy that's working, which is early detection. Why not develop the technology to detect it at this earliest footprints? And I think the public can help by becoming aware of the issues.